Okay, continuing on the yellow slice here, we're going to have frequency polygons for group data. Frequency polygons are very much like histograms with one important little twist. In the uh, polygons, we're going to set up our classes much as we did before, but we have to label each class with its midpoint. And so we're going to have to find these midpoints and talk about them a little bit. Now as before, what we're going to do is to grab our calculator and sort the values that they give us. Pull those values into the calculator, click sort, and get all of your numbers sorted out from small to large. Now in this case, notice that we're going to have an initial class boundary of 1.5, an ending class boundary of 41.5, and they tell us this time that there are five classes. So let's go over here and begin to draw this out much as we did before. Now at least this time they told us that we're going to have five classes. So I drew out the five boxes here representing the five classes, but they tell us some different information. The first thing they tell us here is we have an initial class boundary of 1.5 and an ending class boundary of 41.5. So let's get those penciled in. 1.5 is going to be our initial here and 41.5 is going to be our final class boundary over here. Notice that we know that there are five classes, but this time they don't tell us the class width. So the first thing we need to do is to figure that out. Now notice that the amount of space from 1.5 to 41.5 can be calculated by simply taking the bigger number, 41.5, subtracting the smaller number, 1.5, and that this total distance then from here over to here is 40. But that 40 is going to be divided up among each of the five classes, so we are going to have a class width of 8. Now knowing that we can go ahead and pencil in each of the other class boundaries because remember that 1.5 is our initial class boundary but now since we know the class width is 8 we can simply add that. So 1.5 plus 8 is 9.5 plus an additional 8 would be 17.5 plus an additional 8 would be 25.5 plus an additional 8 would be 33.5 plus an additional 8 would remarkably give us the 41.5 that we should have for the ending. So this is a good way for us to check to make sure that our class width is in fact correct. Now that's nice and everything but that will not give us what we need for a frequency polygon. We must also have these class midpoints. Now the midpoints are going to be the values that are at the center of each of these classes. So we're going to also need to calculate them. Now the way to do that is to take your class boundary at the beginning, your class boundary at the ending, Add those together and divide by 2. So you're going to take in the first case 1.5 plus the 9.5. Add them together, divide by 2. So 1.5 plus 9.5 is going to be 11 and 11 divided by 2 is 5.5. So that means that our first midpoint is 5.5, which means that over here on our Alex screen, 
what we're going to want to do is down here at the bottom put those midpoints and the first of those is 5.5. We're going to need to calculate all the rest of those. Now what we could do, we're not going to, but what we could do is to simply take the midpoint of the next class by taking the second and third class boundaries, adding them together, and dividing by 2. Now we could do that. In fact, we could do that easily on our Alex calculator. Let's go back and do that just for fun. The bad part here is that we're going to lose our values, but we can get them back. So we're going to take our 9.5 plus our 17.5, and I'll highlight those, divide the entire quantity by 2, and we will get our answer of 13.5 which is going to be our next class midpoint, 13.5. Now, we could do that, but we're not going to. There's a shortcut. As you recall, the 8 was our class width. If you're at 5.5 and you add 8, you will get your 13.5. So 13.5 plus another 8 will give you 21.5 plus 8 is 29.5 plus 8 is 37.5. And so you can get all of those class midpoints in a flash. Let's go back to Alex and put those in. So we're going to have 5.5, 13.5. Point five. We're going to have 21.5, we're going to have 29.5, and then I notice that I don't have enough space for the next one, so I need to add one. 37.5, and I have all of my midpoints now in place. Now, just like before, we're going to have to go back and get the frequencies, which means that I'm going to need my numbers sorted once again, which I lost those, but they're quickly recovered by sorting in this fashion. But when you sort these numbers, we're going to want not to sort them by the midpoints, but we will sort them by the class boundaries exactly as we did for the histogram. What I'm going to do is to get these numbers copied and then we will sort them by the class boundaries, not the midpoints. Now again, I feel safer when I write uh, my numbers down in a list. I can simply count them on the screen, but I usually end up losing count and missing some. So once again, let's review here. We need to go back and uh, count these numbers basically by the different categories that are established by these class boundaries. But when we plot those frequencies, we will plot them according to the class midpoints. So remember our first category from 1.5 to 9.5, which means our first cut is going to occur between the 7 and 10, and that means our first frequency is 2. That 2 will be plotted on the first midpoint, and so the midpoint was 5.5, we'll make the frequency at 2. Moving back to our list, our second frequency cut or our frequency boundary is going to be from 9.5 to 17.5. And so the 17.5 is going to cut between the 16 and the 20. There will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 values in there. The next category is going to be from 17.5 to 25.5. 25.5 is going to cut between the 25 and the 27. There are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 values in that class. Now, our next class then is going to be from 25.5 to 33.5. 
which means that we're only going to have this one and this one in that class, or two. And in the last one, there's simply going to be this one value. So we are going to have the frequencies of two, then six, then another six, then two, and lastly, one. And this should be our frequency polygon for grouped data.